This next section is VOR training. This is a, an application that um, as clinicians we're very excited about because this actually gives us a, an objective starting point for VOR training. So we can send our patients home with an exercise program that's appropriate for their level of difficulty. So I'm gonna start here and click on the VOR training icon. So in VOR training, again, I can train Mary in all three directions. We're going to stick with the horizontal for now, and I'll click on continue. Mary, don't move your head. We're going to initialize the tracker. And what you see when you get into the VOR training screen is that we have the ability to train Mary using optotypes, ease, we can use words, we can use pictures, we can do custom text, we can do any type of training that we can create using this very flexible software. What you'll notice when you go in here is that velocity dependent is the default setting. I'm going to uncheck velocity dependent because what velocity dependent does it, it, is it only shows the optotype when Mary's head is at the appropriate velocity, which means every time she decelerates to stop and go the next direction, the optotype disappears. So it's kind of flashing on there. I'm going to uncheck that because I, I prefer the optotype to be on the screen the entire time throughout training. We're going to train Mary today with optotypes and we can choose a multitude of different backgrounds. Um, we can do solid colors, we can do checkers, we can do falling objects. So I'm going to train her with falling objects. We're going to train both the left and the right. And when you go down here you can see that the distance is preset. We tested her at five feet and her training distance is five feet. The target size is set at point to logmar and her head velocity is 103 degrees per second and why is it 103 degrees per second because that was the slowest when she was turning her head to the left she could only see to 103 degrees per second so i know that that's the point at which she is experiencing retinal slip and that is the point at which i need to start her training if we use a metronome, our metronome is going to be set at 155 beats per minute. That calculation is done for us because metronome and beats per minute um, and degrees per second don't have a one-to-one -one relationship. There's a calculation that goes in there. And in this software, the calculation is done for you. So Mary, are you ready to do some training? I'm ready. All right, when I click on the start button, what's gonna happen is that that ping you hear is the metronome. The metronome is the same speed at which she would do this exercise at home. So if she has a metronome app on her phone, she can do this exercise at home at the right speed. Now Mary, here are your distance markers. Okay. I want you to hit each marker to the beat of a metronome. Good, now when she's got that, I click the start button. Left. She said left. Up. I want her to do this exercise Down. for 60 to 90 right. seconds. Down. Right. Down. Good job, Mary. Keep going. Keep your Left. head moving. Right. Good job. Down. Left. Great work. I'm going to stop. You did great. How do you feel? I feel good. Good. I would want Mary to do this exercise for 60 to 90 seconds for the purposes of this demonstration. We're going to stop here. What you see is that her head velocity is indicated here. We can see that she moved symmetrically to the right side and the left side, and she had a consistent velocity across the training period. Um, her compliance was 83%, meaning that she didn't get all of the E's correct. And that's okay. We don't expect 100%. Um, we want this exercise to be challenging enough that she is making some errors. Um, if she was getting them all right, then we would know that the level was too easy for her. Now, I can save this training and it'll inform the next round of training that we do, um, or I can make this training more challenging for her. I can change this if I say no, I do not want to save this training. I can repeat this trial and I can make things more difficult for her. 
For example, I can um, change the background color on the, on the screen to a, a different color, which might be more difficult for her to um, adjust to. I can also add checkers to the background, which can make things more difficult. I can also speed up the head velocity in degrees per second. Maybe um, I want Mary to work at 120 degrees per second. Okay. And I don't want the metronome, and the metronome setting automatically changed to 180 when I changed to 120. I don't want the metronome on for this, for this particular exercise. Mary, are you ready? I'm ready. All right, we're going to start. Go ahead and practice. Great. Up. Up. Right. Right. Down. Great. Stop, Mary. Perfect. You're doing great. Now, the, the, the really um, exceptional piece of this software is that we can now do balance training and VOR training at the same time. If I don't save this, I can go to repeat, and I can actually collect balance data while Mary is doing this activity. I can have Mary standing on the static force plate. I can have her standing on the dynamic force plate. And I can incorporate balance and VOR at the same time, which is important because that's how we function in life. VOR and postural control have to work together. So we've completed our training exercise for the day, and now I can print out for Mary and for the medical record an exact instruction for Mary to do at home or for the next therapist that's working with Mary. So if I click on daily report, you can see that I've got three tabs up here, training results, raw data, and exercise instructions. The training results will allow me to see what I did in training. So for this example, we did um, 60 seconds at 120 degrees per second of head movement, and our visual optotype was 0.2 logmar. We also have the ability to look at her GST results. We had her GST results from testing are right here in our report. So we're able to see that. Um, we're also able to see her compliance. Is she, was she doing the appropriate level of difficulty for the exercise? For the raw, for the exercise instructions, the exercise instructions are in my mind, the most valuable piece of this software because what these exercise instructions allow us to do is give specific exercises to the patient when they go home. We not only have appropriate optotype sizes for different distances away from the wall, the patient's going to put the optotype on the wall, but we also have the ability to put up markers so that the patient knows how much amplitude to turn their head. So we have very specific instructions now so that we know that our patient is exercising at the appropriate level of difficulty to improve their VOR adaptation. If, if you're um, in a therapy clinic and you perform the exercises differently than are indicated on these instructions, then you ha these exercise instructions are completely editable. You click on edit instructions and you are able to edit these for your own um, clinic use. The other thing about the exercise instructions is that it gives the patient the opportunity to set their metronome based on the exact point of retinal slip that we determined during GST testing. And if we advanced that through training, um, when we save the exercise, that instruction will be carried over for, for um, GST training and will show up on the patient's exercise instructions.